you don't want recorded. All right, here we are. It's the recording has started now. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, welcome to the IBFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync. It is the 3rd of February. It is 2020 already, and we're in the second month already. Can you believe it? Um, uh, cool. If you are here, please add your name to your attendees list. Um, I will post the link in the chat just in case anyone missed it. Um, <clears throat> And if you have an async update, if you have been working on some things and would like to update some people on what you've been up to, we won't go through uh, async updates in the meeting, but please do add them to the bottom and so everyone can check out what you've been up to and ask questions uh, asynchronously. Um, but what we will do now is we will go through our high priority initiatives. Um, we have a note taker already. Thank you, Jacob. Um, so high priority initiatives, let's get started. Um, upcoming and or shipped releases. Um, I have an update here for, well, it's kind of an update. JS Hyperfest 041, the RC is landing imminently. Um, essentially, I want to publish it after this meeting. Um, so that's cool. Um, there was a uh, blog post, an explainer blog post um, to explain a lot of the uh, API changes that are happening in this release, um, the refactors that have been done and the reasons behind them, uh, and to give uh, everyone a, uh, a chance to digest those changes, um, figure out what, what it means for them and their code base, um, and, and, uh, and hopefully get a head start on, on the changes before they actually land. So uh, that's been released. The link is there in the notes. Uh, there are API changes in the release issue, um, and there's a migration guide for your code. Um, Jacob is here, but since last time, the B2B has shipped. Not too much news, I guess, other than it's there. There's a blog post in the, in the pipeline. Uh, well done to everyone who has worked on that, and thank you. That's really cool news. Uh, and the other final thing is the Go IPFS 04.23 got released, a bug fix release, fixing some critical issues. There's also a blog post uh, to explain what is going on in that release on the website. Uh, Jacob or Stephen, do you have anything to add to that, to those notes? Uh, to the GoFest release? Um, yeah. Nothing other than we beat JS. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> Thanks to the JS Tech Lead Finder release. First notes. release of the year. Uh, okay. Uh, but no, the release is out. It appears to be working. Um, I haven't had any complaints about terrible things going wrong. So. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so go check out those releases and those release posts um, if you haven't already. Uh, let's move on to upgrade uh, testing infra and or process. Uh, so Stephen, David, Nonsense and Raul? Who's Nonsense again? What's his name? Hey, you. It's Anton. Yeah, it's me. Steven, you want to do an update or shall I? Uh, you know more about what's going on than I do. OK. Uh, so from the test ground uh, perspective, many things happened uh, last week. So we merged compositions, um, which is basically the feature that allows you to run various groups of uh, different images on test ground. Um, we merged a feature which allows you to basically store anything that you want from your test plan on an S3 bucket. So now if you run, let's say, a thousand node deployment with, uh, let's say, the DHT test plan, you're free to store whatever assets or artifacts you want um, on the S3 bucket and then easily browse through them. Um, apart from that, yeah, many other small improvements. Um, and tomorrow we'll probably be ready with the version 0 0.1 release. Uh, we are just uh, finishing up on the logs and the outputs part of it. Um, so that's pretty much what's going on. I guess during tomorrow's code will be more stuff communicated. Nice. Thank you, Anton. Do you want to add a uh, note to the upcoming slash shipped releases for the 0 0.1 release? Is there like a, a, a an issue with some a summary of what's what to expect, um, or is it just everything? It's pretty much a lot of stuff. So yeah, I'll, I'll double check it with Raul first, and then we'll definitely announce it to everyone. 
super cool. Um, you said, um, just one quick question, groups of images. What does that mean exactly? The, like groups of differently configured nodes, I'm guessing, something like that? Different versions of, let's say, lib P2P, so that you have 10% gotcha. of the network with one version and uh, let's say 70% of the network with another version, etc. Cool. Awesome. Um, all right. Any questions or additions to that? Okay, we will move on then. Um, next up, we have content routing. Uh, would someone like to give an update on content routing? Uh, I think, can you give an update on your side? Yeah. Um, so uh, testing is is moving along. Um, we're working on how to create like sort of reproducible graphs and tests so we can start debu like debugging the difference between the two implementations we have right now. Um, we've gotten uh, predictable peer IDs um, with, uh, working in tests. Uh, the creating an arbitrary mesh seems to be working so far. Um, I put it, we introduced like a, introduced like a staging uh, thing where sort of basically each peer in the test runs one at a time in order to avoid TCP simultaneous connect issues, which hopefully we can get around in a different way uh, going forward. And then otherwise just trying to output more information and visualize it to see what's happening, uh, which included finding a bug where we were sending more information than we needed to when we called find peer. That is where things are at for now. More, more testing things ongoing. Uh, and I think Yusuf may be here. I can't see him. Yusuf. No. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I think this, I assume this sign uh, is updates from Yusuf or maybe someone else. Yeah, I put that in there. He's going to be working. Okay. Uh, he got feedback last week uh, from Raul, so he's going to work on uh, getting that feedback done um, and just work trying to uh, get it over the hill. While it's not a uh, the biggest priority in the grand scheme of content routing, um, it's almost done, so we want to just finish it now. OK. Uh, my update here is also we have some uh, open tasks. Uh, and uh, no one's currently working on these. So if you are finding yourself at loose ends and want to spin something off, um, uh, we have a simultaneous dial bug in the PP that's been there for ages. Um, uh, but like, we're not like basically, it's not something we can fix easily, but it's something we can sort of work around easily. The problem is uh, two peers connect, they both see the inbound connection, so they cancel their outbound connection because they haven't seen that finish yet, and they both walk away. What we'd like to do is just say, fine, they connect, and they just keep two connections, and whatever, we deal with it. Um, uh, another issue is autonet improvements. Um, there are a bunch of bugs in the autonet repo. We're planning on relying on this. Uh, so if you're interested in this, talk to me and I'll like, point you at different things that need to get fixed here. Uh, finally, tests. If you're uh, less familiar with Go, uh, uh, we could really use help like building uh, tests, especially, actually, I think there are a bunch of them left over for BitSwap. You could talk to Dirk. I'm sure he could hand some of those off to you. Um, like a lot of correctness tests, uh, not necessarily just, well, some correctness tests, some like uh, thrashing tests. I'm sure Dirk has like things he can hand off there. Uh, that's all I want to say. Okay. If you start working on stuff or are going to work on stuff, please let me know so I can make sure uh, everything's getting updated. Nice, thank you all. Uh, I, um, I would like to help you with that stuff. Uh, I'm hoping that by next time, this next time we meet, this time next week, um, I will have been able to put down the, or hand over the reins to, on the JS IPFS train uh, to the aching brain, Alex Corsides, Um And hopefully he can drive it for a while and I can um, help out on the, uh, on the content routing stuff. I am excited to uh, get involved. Um, yeah, let's do it. Um, but hopefully, hopefully by this time next week, uh, the JS IPFS release will be out the door and I'll be freed up. But yeah, if um, other people obviously who are watching the call want to help out, then also come and help us. We really need help. <laughs> um, all right.
Rad. Content routing, done. Subdomain gateway, Lido, do you have an update for us? Uh, yep. Uh, so a quick update is that I got distracted. <laughs> However, uh, the PR is in a pretty good shape. It's not ready yet, it's still in the draft. However, we, we got it to the point where, oh gosh, I had it bookmarked and <laughs> resized my window. All right, so we got uh, to the point where we are pretty happy, I believe, with the configuration options. And uh, it got pretty uh, simple, like the point, to the point where it's super simple, so it's just like, a flag for controlling opting in to the subdomains and then specifying which uh, gateway paths are mounted on the subdomain. Uh, what remains to be done uh, in the PR are sharpness tests for all the edge cases. I got distracted by uh, IPFS desktop release and that's like P0 for me and this is P1 now. Uh, so when I, after IPFS desktop release, I hope to finalize this uh, this week uh, what we also agreed with Steven is kind of increasing uh, a scope of this PR a little bit and adding uh, this hardening of uh, path-based gateways. Uh, basically, there w w by default, we would uh, refuse to store uh, cookies and like refuse uh, persisting any storage on path, address, path gateways. Uh, and to do that, we need like additional flag for uh, for users who put stuff behind to reverse proxy and take care of those nuances. Uh, but that's the only missing part, I believe. I'm sorry, I believe I, I realize now that I'm a terrible person. Uh, increasing scope of PR is probably not what I should have told you to do. Um, <laughs> I, it's not uh, a big increase. It's just like another flag we need to add and. If it's simpler, like it's whatever simpler. Like if it's simpler, just merge what we currently have and then do this as a second patch. Let's do that. I would uh, make yeah, it a separate is, PR. Yeah. Okay, let's make this a separate PR. This okay, is just me then. saying, oh, this is a nice feature. Let's have it. I, I need to push it's a nice again. feature, but. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it from me. Nice. Thank you, Lido. Any questions for Lido while we're here? Before we move on? Okay, Brad, um, let me find the document. Um, where do we get to bit swap updates? Uh, Dirk, do you have an update for us? Yes, uh, I can verify that Stephen is not a terrible person because he reviewed my 9,000 line PR <laughs> for the bit swap proof of concepts and we finally got it merged. So that was a pretty exciting moment in my life, probably the best day of my life so far. Um, so, so basically last week I spent quite a bit of time uh, doing performance profiling and uh, I made some graphs and stuff. There's a, a link to an issue there that um, has all the graphs in it and a little bit of a little bit of sort of analysis. Show us the graphs. Oh, you want to see them? I want to see them for the recording. <laughs> okay, let me share the screen here. Uh... And pick thumbnail. You guys see that? Yes. So, so yeah, here's um, a few of the performance analyses we were doing this week. So this is comparing uh, master or what was master at the time. So the old bit swap versus the, the new bit swap that we've just merged. Uh, so we're mostly concerned with how long it takes to get stuff and the number of duplicate blocks that get sent around. In other words, extra data that we don't really need to be sending if we're hundred percent efficient. So um, this first graph or this first set of graphs is uh, simulating a network with five millisecond latency and with varying bandwidth. So this first one is one gigabit. This is 160 megs, 40 megabytes, 20 meg megabytes and 10 megabits, megabytes of bandwidth. And you can see uh, the blue lines are the old bit swap and the yellow, orange and red lines are the new bit swap. So for example, at one gigabit bandwidth, you can see that these three red lines are a lot faster than the blue lines. So the darkest line here is when there's four seeds and one leech. Uh, the next one is two seeds and one leech, and this is when there's one seed and one leech. So the new uh, bit swap outperforms old bit swap pretty significantly when there's high bandwidth. Uh, when, we, 
when we get down to pretty low bandwidths, it's quite similar, but still, there's still a, quite a big improvement there. Um, and then this set of graphs is just about comparing performance when there's very variable numbers of leeches and seeds. So in this case, there's three leeches and three seeds. Uh, so I guess the question we're asking is, are we taking advantage of uh, downloading from all the seeds or do we sort of send all our traffic to one seed? Um, so again, you can see that uh, the yellow line, the new bit swap performs significantly better than the old bit swap, particularly for higher bandwidth scenarios. This one is about duplicate blocks. So basically the new, new bit swap doesn't really send duplicate blocks. Um, instead, it sends out uh, a request to all the peers saying, hey, do you have what I'm looking for? And if they have it, they just say yes, instead of actually sending back a block. So that is, ends up saving us a lot of uh, duplicate information. Yeah. And the last graph is just verifying those results at 100 millisecond latency. What's up, Stephen? Uh, before we go on, I want to uh, note that we don't just say we don't have two factors for every block. Instead, we ask one of the peers for the block and all the other peers do have the block. If, that, if right. we also have a feature where like, that peer will come back and tell us, no, I don't have the block, so we can immediately like, look at the other peers that have said, yes, I have the block, and go and ask the next like, one that we know will actually work. Uh, so it's not like we have like two round trips for requests now. It's more that like we have uh, best case one round trip, worst case two round trips instead of like uh, send a request, wait for timeout, send another request, or like send two requests, wait for timeout, send four requests, wait for timeout, and they keep on sending more of a request to finally get like a ton of blocks at once. Thanks. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so basically we're able to just take advantage of these new message types to make things faster and more more efficient. So it's not 100% ready yet. There's, uh, we still have to uh, make a couple of little changes to make sure that the two versions are interoperable. That is that the new version can still speak to nodes running the old version. Um, and I'm still writing a few kind of like fuzz testing plans and things like that, but we're pretty close. Any questions? That sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, can I request that you, because you did a presentation on the changes that you were going to make a while ago. Can you put a link to that in the um, in the notes so that if anyone wants to check it out, um, they can get a good overview of what's actually changing? Yeah, sweet. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, I know we're running a bit behind, but that was that was worth it. Uh, so we've got stream-based content-based, no, stream content-based junking research slash improvements. <laughs> Catchy. Uh, <laughs> Peter, would you like to give us an update? Yes. Uh, so uh, last week towards the end, I actually got most of the bulk of the work done on the, on the tool that I'm writing to be able to evaluate different uh, options for uh, changing different algorithms. Then I had a meeting with uh, Eric, uh, who told me a lot of stuff about how Go works internally. So as a result of that, I'm a little bit rewriting the entire thing. Uh, like there is no single method that has like the same signature anymore. Uh, but I am uh, close enough for us to be able to use this tomorrow uh, when we are going to talk about removing the, uh, the T size from uh, from the protocols to basically be able to evaluate things. Uh, I'll have to stay a little bit later today, but uh, yeah, it will get uh, to that place. And yeah, I'm uh, still on track to hopefully uh, open it to to community posts within uh, within protocol labs and, and outside uh, mid this week or so. And uh, before I go, I was at FOSDEM uh, this weekend. I really have to put this on camera. Like I got a t-shirt that Wait, is that Inigo Montoya? <laughs> Who is that? Yes. Uh, no, this is the this is the magic meme from uh, from I, I don't know from where, but uh, yeah, this is actually a T-shirt by Mattermost, and they don't even have their logo on it. It's like that is, it is it is an amazing T-shirt. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm really talking about that. It's awesome. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all I have. <laughs> Love it. Thank you.
Um, all right, cool. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your updates on initiatives. The, we have a section called Other Initiatives. These are initiatives that are uh, like in backlog or on pause, or but are still in, in they are in cold storage, waiting for us to bring them back to life again um, at some point. Um, we have a question on Unix Fest 1.5. Uh, yes, uh, Alex is Alex here. Yes, Alex is here. Uh, any chance we could get this in Go now, uh, so we could have cross compatibility? I don't know what your cross compatibility is. Yes. That's a yes. Okay. I mean, maybe. <laughs> there is a chance. Oh, we can talk about this later. I just wanted to ask. <laughs> okay. She, we get enough uh, monkeys with enough keyboards. And then eventually okay. one of them. For a matter of time. OK. Uh, the next one is also, well, actually, it's technically the Momax. It's also mine. Um, uh, Adin, uh, you had a lot of numbers from the ICFIS ad uh, improvements. Uh, but I know uh, Molly's looking for numbers that she can publish. Um, uh, and we have new, like, is how long it takes to add Ubuntu. But we also have old, is how long it takes to add Ubuntu, but they're into the machine. Um, is there any chance you have, like, all this how long it takes to add Ubuntu on the same machine? Oh, sorry, Molly has other questions around this. Well, the one that I'm using right now is that it previously took 24 minutes to add Arch Linux, and now it took 11 minutes to add Arch Linux. And I think those are, are you know, apples to apples, but I'm not 100% sure. So if we just, like, update the issue where we, like, did all of the ad performance work with, like, you know, here's what it used to be, like, the table of the times, um, that would be really useful for me to link to something that people don't have to like scroll to in flight comments that like tell you one side or the other and like read through it in order to validate like yes Molly isn't lying to me in a blog post um, so that would that would make that'd be snazzy if we have those things available uh, I mean all of my all of the data is that I have offhand is on the issue I can run the tests again it just will take an hour or something, but that's fine. Like, I think what was what was like put them all in the same place in the issue. Oh, okay, like can, yeah, because they were taken like one yeah you know, one day at a time, so like smush yeah. them all together. Okay, yeah, like update the the the, the first part that you said means the results or something like that. Smush them. Okay, uh, all right. Are we were happy with that. Nice. Um, Okay, then we got to distribute signaling. Should kick off, could, should kick back off. Sorry, I'm having real trouble actually reading words at the moment. Should kick back off later this quarter. Uh, that's cool. Um, multi migration to multi hash keys in, to, in the box store. Um, uh, before we move on, I actually have a question about this. Would this help with hole cat or um, NAT hole punching? For distributed signaling? Yes. So, for things that have WebRTC transports, yes. So basically the idea as part of this, we'd also need uh, direct connection upgrades. So mm -hmm. we would use a uh, limited circuit relay, connect over that, distribute over the relay, and then, then merge. But in theory, any node that we're mutually connected to could serve as the, the signaler. Okay, so this is planning, this is using direct connection upgrades, the same, okay, got it. Yep. It's using the same thing we're doing in, in Go at which, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, yeah, multi hash uh, migration to multi hash keys in block store. There's something here. Um, the go side of this is ongoing. Um, I think the pieces are falling into place. Uh, the main thing missing is the testing of the migration. Everything else is more or less okay. Sorry, I was watching the magic GIF. <laughs> Took me longer to get back to here than I expected. Um, thank you, Hector. That's cool. Um, uh, all right. Uh, design review proposals. There is a um, proposal for um, ignoring the T size property in um, DAGPB uh, links. Uh, it is happening on tomorrow at 3 p.m. GMT. Uh, if you'd like to come and talk about that, then please add your name to the list and we will invite you to the meeting. 
Any takers? Put your name on the list in the notes. All right. Uh, blockers and asks. Any last minute blockers and asks that people think of? Okay. Questions? Any last minute questions or things for the parking lot? I'm wondering if anyone would be interested in now or or pushing this off till later, having a discussion on like how fine peer should work. Um, it seems like it's probably not trivial um, or not obvious that it should continue working the same way that it works right now, which is that it just says, oh, someone gave me an address. That's probably right. And then gives up. Um, that may not be true going forward. And we have things like signed records and other stuff. And so the, the way to do this is not obvious. I th think this discussion has to be had with the, the P2P team. Um, but I mean, like, should we do a design review like this week or should we do something like further down the road? Uh, well, sorry, but I would bring this up to the P2P meeting, which I think is in like a half an hour or something like that. Because uh, I think yes. there's a lot of people there who'd be interested. I'd be interested if I can make it. Uh, all right. Um, parking lot. The, okay. Anything else from anyone else? We've kind of reached the end of the document and it's six o'clock in my time zone. <laughs> in case anyone wasn't staring at the chat, just want to introduce Fabio, who's joining the. Sorry, if I'm. You can pronounce your name appropriately. I'm bad at the Portuguese pronunciations, but um, joining the test ground team as a TPM. He's Fabio Martins. Fab. Fabio Martins. Exactly. <laughs> so hi everyone. Uh, I'm the newest member of Protocol Labs uh, from Oxy, and I'm really um, excited to, with this opportunity to work with an international team. Uh, it will be a, a big um, challenge for me because I never work uh, uh, remotely, but I think with my good uh, communication skills, I, I will be I will be successful with your help, of course. <laughs> So let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Rad, welcome. Cool, and thanks for coming to the meeting. OK. Um, all right. Um, are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. All right, thanks, everyone, for coming. It's been, it's been fun times to see your face again. And uh, I will see you this time next week, most likely, uh, for another exciting round of IPFS Core Implementations Weekly. <laughs> bye. Cool. All right, bye. Bye. Bye.